We're going to look at the tonal correction tool now. But before we do that, I'm going to put down a layer of paint in the background, just so you can see that the tonal correction is only going to affect the the layer that we're working on. So I'm going to put some just some blue paint. And now I'm going to import an image that I pre-selected that is just a painting I found online. It is uh, by uh, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, the great painter. And it depicts, I actually found it on the page for his son, Jean Renoir, right here, who would go on to become the great French film director, one of my favorite directors. But anyways, I just wanted to use this image because it, it's very colorful and uh, all the changes that I make are going to be very noticeable in it. So the first thing I'm going to do to, uh, before I can do any tonal corrections, I need to rasterize it. So I'm going to right click on the uh, menu here and go down to rasterize and click it. That'll remove these control points. If I want to make any further controls, I mean further uh, changes, so I can just apply transformation, go to edit and transform. But that's not what I want to do right now. Actually, I want to do my tonal correction. So let's try the first one, the brightness and contrast. And like it sounds, it's going to let us adjust how bright the image is and how much contrast. And you notice that the blue is not being affected at all. So this is, uh, sometimes you'll be working on an image and you think it looks great, but then you just tweak the brightness or the contrast a little and it looks a little better. So this is definitely a very useful one. I'm going to cancel it. The next one under uh, edit tonal correction is hue, saturation, and luminosity. And this gives you three things. So hue is just uh, the colors that are being shown. You can change the kind of dominant color scheme. Saturation is kind of how, how kind of how rich the colors are, and if you take it up, it, it starts to get this kind of uh, it, it becomes a little too noticeable and a little too blocky. Let me show you the the max, but still that can be a cool effect, definitely. And the, if you take it down too low, it'll become black and white. When there's absolutely no saturation, it's just black and white. And then finally, brightness is like the brightness on the other one. It's just another place for it, because as you work with these, you may need to adjust, readjust the brightness. So that is hue, saturation, and luminosity. Next we have, for our tonal corrections, we have posterization. And this is going to kind of, uh, as I turn it up, it's going to become more kind of Oh, excuse me, as I turn it up, actually, it's more like normal. But if I turn it down, it's going to become more kind of like this. <laughs> so it kind of uh, simplifies the, kind of turns your color, your multi-level colors into kind of flats. So that is posterization. Next we have reverse gradient, which is essentially going to re reverse all the colors in uh, kind of like a, a negative like that you used to get when you uh, or well you still get if you work with real uh, photographic film I don't know if people do that anymore <laughs> but uh, if you're not working with digital film you, you used to get these negatives that you would use to take to a, like a photo developing place and they would you know make more copies of your photos but I don't know if anybody does that anymore a reverse gradient, it's like that. It's kind of like a ghost-like look almost. So I'm going to undo that, control Z. Next we have the level correction. I don't use this one too often because mainly because I feel like you can get similar results by with the other ones and that the other ones offer a little more kind of um, intuitive control of what you're trying to accomplish. And this one is just a little, you have to like work with the amount of these colors that are in your picture and kind of play around with it. So maybe you'll like this, but I, I tend to not use this one. Next we have 
the tone curve. And this one is gives you this. Uh, actually, we see we've seen this in a few other uh, parts of the program, and these this is like a a thing that lets us basically click anywhere and create a point and kind of readjust it. And we can add more points all we want, really, and play around with this and kind of play around with the colors and slide them around. And if we ever want to reset it, we can click reset. And if there's ever a time when we, there isn't a reset button, you can also just, um, just drag points off the thing and then they'll bounce back to their original position. But uh, yeah, you can get some interesting colors and effects using this one, just playing around with these adding points and stretching them out and so on. So I like this tool. It has some, some pretty interesting colors you can get out of it. Okay, the next one is our color balance. And we have three colors, cyan, actually three ranges of colors, cyan to red, magenta to green, and yellow to blue. And basically we can just move it more or less towards one or the other and kind of get some flavor to our picture. Next we have minorization. And this is similar to posturization, except it's just black and white. And at one end it's just totally black, and then the other end is totally white. And in between are all the ranges of things you can do to kind of get these black and white prints. But it's going to turn everything to either black or white, no gray tone at all. Next we have gradient map. This one is, uh, I tend to not use this a lot either, but this is, uh, you can use these to kind of produce gradients, yeah, across your, uh, your image and stretch them out. And basically it's going to be adjusted up here. And let me try a different one, blue sky. So these are kind of prefab settings that you can, are supposed to give you this look. You know, this is what it's supposed to look like at sunset, sunset dark, night sky. So you may find a use for these. They're just kind of like filters in a sense that um, many cameras or many apps have nowadays. So those are your tonal corrections. In addition to all those, we also have the uh, same options under our layer. If we go down to new correction layer, we have the exact same things. The only difference is if I, for example, use one of these, let me just use a tone curve and I adjust it here, you'll notice that it's actually affecting the entire image, including the blue. So it's affecting all layers. And when I uh, finish this, it actually creates a layer that is affecting all the layers below it. And if I want to limit it to just one layer, like this layer right here, I can uh, set it as a clip it layer below. And that way it'll do pretty much the exact same thing that the tonal correction would do. The only difference is that now it's it's a layer that I can turn on and off and kind of like create it kind of non-destructively so that my original one is not uh, kind of too far back in the process that I can't reverse it if I need to. So that is just another uh, consideration. But these are great tools and however you use them, I think you'll get a lot out of them.